In one of the previous videos, we mentioned that writing high-performing application is simply the right use of event loop and thread pool. And we talked about non-blocking code, and I shared two best practices. In this video, we will continue with the third best practice. Synchronous functions are blocking by nature, and you should be careful when using them on your server. These functions usually end with sync, and you can use the callback or promise version of these functions to write asynchronous codes. The fourth tip is to minimize the use of json.parse and json.stringify on large data. That might be a bit surprising, and you're probably using these two functions many times. While these two functions are fine for small to medium data, the problem starts when your input grows. It takes a huge time, and it could potentially block the event loop. If your application takes in a process data from a user, you should be cautious about the size it takes. Here, I have a code that parses a JSON file and measures the time it takes. And here, I have a big JSON file, which is about 185 megabytes. Okay, let's go back to index.js and run the code. A bit of waiting, and it took about two seconds. So this can slow down your server when you have many requests and also a bigger file. Let me also add a simple console log here to see how the code is blocking. Let's run it. So the blocks of code is being printed last because it is being blocked by the parsing. Part of the reason why this takes so long and is also blocking is because it's reading and parsing the whole data. So I'll show you an asynchronous way of doing this by using StreamJSON. StreamJSON parses your JSON chunk by chunk instead of reading the whole thing. Let me scroll to the bottom and find the code. So to get us started, I will copy and paste this and remove what I don't need. So let's simplify the code. For example, we don't need the pipeline. Let me minimize the size of the terminal. And there are still some things to clean up. So let me scroll up a bit and remove this function as we don't need compression for now. We also don't need the ignore function import. This should be stream arrays because we are going to stream an array of values. And it should be imported from the streamers slash stream array. We don't need this function either. So let me change the file name here to the city big dot JSON file. So the JSON data has two properties, type and features. And I only want features, which is an array of data. So the pick function will only pick and return the features. And let me remove this. Now, let me replace stream values with stream arrays. And here, we don't need the counter variables. So pipeline.onData is listening to a stream of data. And let me console log the data we get from the stream, and the function should take the data as an argument. Now let's visualize how the code works. So the data will go through every function in the chain, and after it finishes, it will return a stream. So the chain function takes an array of functions and returns a stream of data. The first argument is fs.createReadStream, which is used to generate a stream from a file. The second is a parser, which is used to parse the JSON. And the third is a pick function, which is used to pick only certain properties from the JSON data. The fourth function takes an array and produces a stream of its value. You can also add more functions like ignore if you want to remove some attributes. Let me run it and see if the code works as expected. Okay, so I forgot to install the stream JSON package. Um, let me copy the command from here and paste it on my terminal. So it has started the installation, as you can see. 
Now I need to rerun the file and see the change. It says stream array is not a function. I think I misnamed the stream array. And this needs to be corrected to array instead of arrays. The import also should be from stream array. So as you can see, it's continuously streaming the data. For example, let's filter by the odd even property, which has a value of E if it's even, and we will return only the even ones. So uh, let me copy this and head back to the index.js. Now let's check if the data dot value dot properties and let's take the property name from the JSON file. Let me scroll and see if I can find it. Okay, so let me copy it and add dot odd even here. And if only it is equal to E, I will return the data. Let's rerun the file. So we got only the even data, so the data filtering is working as expected. One more thing I want to do is check how the code is none blocking. So let me add a simple console log at the end of the code. And if it runs first, it means it's none blocking. So let me comment this out first and run the code. So JSON stream can be a great approach when dealing with big JSON data extensively, as it makes the code non-blocking and more performant. 